Hello, Earth Radio, Seattle Podcast Number Four. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Seattle podcast number 44. Four plus four equals eight. What's the magic? Infinity, figure eight. Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. Thanks for joining me. Now let's go on the wild ride of Kring music and abstract vocal sounds. Audio sculpture begins now. Jalom Dirgang, Shalalo, Zalok, Esa Ganso, Sela Kanti, O Sela Koti Bolea, Eucalyptus sent the wind, Eucalyptus sent me back, Diego. San Diego Hello Shire tu colon silanza Asse colo tu Shigronto Ah Nesiklo Ipa Asalo Ikalan silanti Oka Sileko si Alambo Underwasser, favorite painter. Some don't like his work, and I don't care because he's lovely. Jim Carrey. Daring to paint positive message. Why judge the rich and famous? Freedom to create is the message. Who cares about fame and money? Who cares about competition and judging art? The point is do what you love, do your best, share if you want, keep it private if you want. My favorite artist besides me is Hunderwasser from Austria. Look him up. H-U-N-D-E-R-T-W-A-S-S-S-E-R. Two S's, not three. Triple shot, three. Hunderwasser. Was introduced to him as a child by my visual artist mother. Thank you. 
is a song I wrote when I was 11, still working on it. And now I'd like to introduce a short clip to you of a really cool project that I was involved in. This is a track from an album called Nodes. And it features Goddess Kring, Zahava, Reed Gazala, Mama Bar, and it's called All Hail the Goddess from Nodes by various artists. It's available on Bandcamp for free listening. It's experimental, noise rock, improvised music. A friend of mine in Toronto, Canada, curated it, and I'm happy to be a part of it.
Ride the dude. 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 Well, that was quite the cacophony of sound, correct? So my friend in Canada put that together. And that's Nodes, and I'm part of that. Goddess Kring is part of that. So thanks for listening. And I am thinking about the recent violent things that have been happening in the United States of America and feeling troubled by it, saddened by it, frightened by it. I think that from my perspective here in Seattle, I know there's marches that happen in Seattle. And for uh, a few times, I have marched against war in the street because I am somebody who is for peace and love and finding the unity in the diversity of human beings. I would expand that to include plants and animals because I think there's, along with racism, classism, sexism, etc., there's a prejudice against plants and animals and that some humans think that we dominate. We dominate this planet and I can hardly stand it. I wrote a poem about that and I feel sad for plants and animals and the way that we dominate them as humans and treat them as if they're slaves for humans in terms of the the meat and cow and chicken and dairy industry and the meat industry. And it's sad uh, that we've lost touch with, you know, the whole aspect of having a small family farm where the animals are treated with respect and love, hopefully. So I would extend that to that. And I was just going to say that I, um, forgive me, I'm a little distracted because I'm having a a back pain and I'm needing to go to the doctor again for that because I had a really bad back spasm and now I have this sharp pain in my lower right side of my back and it's really distracting me. It's a long story, but I'm going to figure it out and heal from it. I'm a very strong, healthy person overall. I eat healthy and all that. So when I exercise and I sleep a lot and I I drink a lot of water and do all that. So I was just talking about the violence happening in the United States. And I have a few different theories about it. But I was going to say I I have marched against war a few times. And it felt kind of good to, to stand with people who were against war. But at the same time, I'm thinking that fighting against all of the bad things happening in the world only in my opinion seems to make it worse at least for me my role it feels wrong uh, to fight against horrible things because then the horrible things fight back so there's a kind of a non-duality attitude of seeing the oneness and the unity in the diversity and if you try to fight against something it can fight back So the solution for me to counteract all of the horrible things happening on the planet, personally, I think, is to build up the goodness, build up compassion, love, connection, forgiveness, um, understanding. You know, people that do really violent things and are very angry and think they're justified in doing violent things, I don't understand how those people can be reasoned with other than I think it was Martin Luther King and or Jesus and or John Lennon who said, listen to the concerns of your enemy. So to me, I know that not everybody will agree with me about this, but when I think about racism, classism, sexism, speciesism, all of the different ways in which people treat each other with a lack of justice and a lack of equality and fairness, It all comes down to fear and competition, which is the opposite of love and cooperation. If you have love and respect for yourself and love and respect for other people, plants and animals, then you don't harm. You don't feel angry enough to want to harm. So to me, maybe some people are just very sadomasochistic and sociopathic and don't really have any, any, um, empathy or concern for how they affect others and maybe they don't even have concern for themselves because when people do violent things they also are harming themselves even if they think they're winning a contest by harming somebody else and having power and domination over somebody else my own personal feeling is that they are also harming themselves right along with the person plant or animal that they are harming so I believe 
Oh, gosh, I lost my train of thought. Hmm. Okay, what comes down, in my opinion, I'm, I'm speaking philosophically, and I realize that I'm not out there in the streets right now trying to fight for justice or trying to fight for things I believe in because I don't know how I can really serve in that way. It doesn't feel right to me to do that, and I'm not judging people who are out there doing that. I think people should do whatever they think they can do to make the world a better place, whether that's making art or taking care of plants or animals or kids or being a teacher or being a doctor or a healer or a massage therapist or somebody working with uh, handicapped people or, or mentally disabled people or, you know, people are therapists, you know, people are out there trying to, to make the world a better place in their own way. And I feel like the bottom line about all of this violent things happening in the world is about fear and competition and about, to me, about humans feeling like they need to dominate other humans. But why would somebody, like if somebody is prejudiced against another kind of person that's different from themselves, they're not really seeing the unity in the humanity. Even though we are different, there's different kinds of people on this planet from different cultures. <sighs> I just don't understand people that don't see the unity in the diversity. And the only theory that I've come up with that makes sense to me is that it's based on fear and competition. So some humans think that somebody has to win and somebody has to lose and that we have to compete and that somebody has to dominate and, and boss other people around. And they're so afraid of being dominated by somebody else that they think, well, I'm going to dominate them before they have a chance to dominate me. Or perhaps they already feel like they're being dominated by someone. And so to me, if somebody goes around and does violent things, either they're just totally insane and sociopathic, or they're very afraid and they're very insecure and they feel like they have to be violent and dominate like they're going to win a contest because they feel threatened by other people and that's really sad i mean if you're confident and you love yourself then you don't go around harming other people and so and har and also it harms yourself once again so i feel like it would be nice if people would look at their own shadow and take responsibility for their actions and how they affect the world and actually care so i don't understand people who don't care about how they affect other people or people who are not embarrassed or ashamed or feel like they did something wrong when they harm other people you know this could be verbally or physically and I also feel I also have a theory because I'm really into nutrition and how that help affects the mental health of people my mental health has been in, improved tremendously by changing what I eat I stopped eating all wheat and I try not to eat sugar and fake chemicals and junk food and I eat um, seeds and nuts and plants and try to eat as much natural food made by planet earth as I can and stay away from processed foods and a lot of artificial flavors and colors and chemicals. I do feel like some people that go off the rails and do really violent things that don't seem to do any good in the world and they feel justified. I do have a theory that perhaps partly it's the way they were raised and taught as children but it could also be from eating chemicals and which can cause brain damage. If you eat really fake chemicals and unhealthy food and you eat a lot of high fructose corn syrup and hydrogenated oil, it can make your blood sugar go up and down, up and down, up and down, which means that you're moody and grumpy and it's inflammatory on the body. So your joints and your muscles as well as your brain is affected if you eat a lot of really junky food it's going to make your brain and your body weak and it's going to make you grumpy and if you already have some angry negative ideas about how the world works and how you have to win a contest and dominate other people you combine that with what you're eating and it makes it even worse so I just have a theory about all of this has all of the injustice and violence in the world I think has something to do with people feeling scared, competitive, unhappy, 
And like they're justified in doing horrible things because they feel like, well, I've got to win the contest. Otherwise, these other people are going to get me. So I better get them. So it's really based on fear. And it's the opposite of feeling cooperation, love, and any kind of faith or trust in other humans. I feel like when people go around fighting each other, they're afraid. Like when there's police brutality, I feel like that is partly about fear. Well, actually, it's mostly about fear. It's about police officers overreacting from a place of fear or from a place of rage and hostility that they have that has been building up for whatever reason. There's anger that's just out of control and it could be something to do with what people are eating as well. It also could be about poverty and about the competition in in a capitalist society. Uh, We have wealthy people that have more power than poor people and I do feel like crime has a direct connection to poverty. The more poverty you have, the more extreme wealth and extreme poverty you have, probably the more violent, uh, competitive, destructive things you're going to have happen because people feel like they have no power. People feel weak and powerless when they have no money or when they're poor and they feel oppressed and they feel trapped and they feel like they need to gain power and dominate other people. So I feel like a lot of um, the ills of humankind comes down to feeling afraid and insecure and like you have to compete against other people for power, uh, fighting for your right to stay alive. You know, deep down underneath all of the drama, I think, is a primal fear, fear of not being able to survive. And I do think that extreme wealth and extreme poverty with the middle class disappearing in this capitalist society in the USA, it does kind of foster a lot of conflict and a lot of fear. You know, wealthy people are afraid of of losing their money and they don't want to be poor. And then poor people are tired of feeling like they are living in poverty, barely surviving. And then they think of the wealthy people as being very greedy and hoarding all the money and making uh, much higher wages. And then the low income workers don't make very much money and they, they you know especially our healthcare system is based on capitalism so that kind of lends itself to f- to having a lot of people that are angry and feel like they want more power and they feel competitive with each other instead of cooperative so there's a poem i wrote called increase cooperation decrease the corporation so that would mean you know, incre- increase cooperation, love, uh, ethics, fairness, fair wages for people, and decrease the corporation, meaning g- decrease the greed. Capitalism that's too extreme pretty much ruins the democracy. It's not really de- democracy when you have extreme capitalism that is unregulated, that lets people pay entry-level workers like seven or eight dollars an hour well they make ten thousand dollars an hour or something you know the wages basically are way too high at the top and way too low at the bottom and there's not much of a ladder to climb for people so I feel like poverty you know Martin Luther King talked about that like yes racism classism and sexism are extremely horrible and we need to evolve out of that and have some kind of cooperation and unity in the diversity of humanity. But I also think poverty is an extreme, extremely wealthy and extremely poor people that feel like they need to compete with each other to win or to have control or power. That, I think, uh, triggers a lot of conflict in the world. So thank you for listening. Now some more art for you. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle, podcast number 44.
Wanting tides of time.
Examine your shadow. Amplify your chameleon tendencies. Unity in diversity. Don't need no university to see unity in diversity. Look at your shadow honestly, openly. Burn the dragon of scapegoating, shadow projection. You are the shadow. You are the light. You are the shadow and the light simultaneously.
surviving the unwinding of time. Thank you for plunging deep into the capacity of fantasy manifesting into reality. Thank you, sun pumping light into high caliber raspberry, creating unusual sensation, unique vibration, grabbing the rabbit out of the hat, knowing this new phase is here, here. It's clear, dear, fear melted away. Thank you, Double X. Your chance for romance is enhanced by your stance, drawings, longings, entwine with the divine.
to the gypsy that I love. 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 Give it a chance, play with material existence, insist on the light-hearted, loving present, infused in every cell, every pore alive, trust nature, ingest what you want to manifest. Drop the rusty chain, the rusty chain out, the rusty out of the rusty cage, the rusty cage. The rusty aged, aged, fine, everything, everything will be alright, more and more, off the grid, putting a lid on phony baloney. Decrease the corporation, increase cooperation, incast the outcast, highlight the underdog, unity in diversity, don't need no university, universal out of her shell, don't need no rehearsal. A total reversal, zombie spell, dwelling in her shell, safe and secure, yet risky and rare, Shan and Kringen, Goddess Cream, Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle, podcast number 41. Trust nature, trust nature, ingest what you want to manifest. Put it to the test. Put it to the test. Put it to the test. Put it to the test.
This is Hollow Earth Radio Seattle, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, podcast number 44. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring.